What a beautiful life. All that I've got, all that I need. I got you, baby, you got me. What more could I ask for? Beautiful life. shining oh so brightly I thought about how good this life is back in the day it wasn't always like this I think about the things we done been through I think about the place that I come from it wasn't always easy so every day I'm thinking God for the beautiful people everywhere I go I just need to see your smiling faces at my show and when you're feeling real love from the family every day is a gift y'all that's all I need blizzard of 2015 um i guess really the only people that got it was new york maine boston people like that so i'm kind of glad that we didn't but if you saw the boots today i was prepared so i was prepared for the blizzard of 2015 and it didn't come so these boots will have to wait for another snowstorm um i have two guests with me today i have valerie coleman on the line first and then i will have the queen of plus size fiction michelle katina on the second half of the show um but first, and I have kind of two soapbox moments today. I wanted to talk to the people that follow, you know, r and B. I'm in, I'm into r and B, and so I look at um, everything that goes out on Instagram. So in, on Instagram, Chris Brown put out that he could not do his concert um, because he still had a hundred hours of community service to do. And somebody on Instagram named Dominique underscore two fifteen went in on him about that. And she, I mean, she literally said that the only reason she bought tickets to that show was to see Trey songs. And she knew that he was going to mess it up for everybody else. And you know, what are you waiting for? You got to do your, she, she actually said his criminal ass better do his community service. And that the only day that she could take off was the day that they were supposed to be doing the show where she lived at. And she was like, you're doing community service since 2009, finish up or give me a refund bitch like like really just called him out like that and then said you only have a hundred hours to do you that's 10 hours for 10 days get it done christopher called him by his full, full government mama issued name so clearly not everyone is accepting chris brown's apology for not being able to make the concert but again i'm with her if you had a thousand hours and this was handed out in 2009 why haven't you done the community service? Like, really? Come on now. I mean, clearly you have had time to make videos because you've made about three videos since 2009. And clearly it's not about, you know, having money. So clearly you just thought the judge was going to be like, oh, we're going to blow that off. You only got 100 hours left to go. No. Nah. You're going to do that extra 100 hours because you were told to do 1,000. So, hey, if I, I know most people, if they didn't do their community service, they would be back in jail. So I would suggest he get his 100 hours done with the quickness. Okay, so on the line, I have Valerie Coleman. Hello, Valerie. How are you? I am well. How are you? I'm very good. Now, Valerie, is the she's an author and a relationship um coach would you say coach 
their culture's good. Okay. Good and and so she has written a book uh, called The Forbidden Secrets of the Goodie Box, What Your Father Didn't Tell You and Your Mother Didn't Know. So here's the thing. What What is one thing that our fathers didn't tell us? And is this for men or women, or is it for both? Well, the Goodie Box book, and that's the website, the Goodie boxbook.com uh -huh. g-o-o-d-y book.com that um it was written for women my audience was specifically the woman who has been hurt in relationship who feels that men have taken advantage of her the woman who has been searching for love and just can't find love the woman who has had heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak that was why i wrote the book i wrote the book for her Maybe that was you at some point in time. You know, the, the person who has just had to deal with the frustrations of wanting to be loved the way I want to be loved, but not receiving the love that I so desire. Okay. So that was my purpose of writing the book. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you okay, so when you wrote this book, was this based off of something you had went through and you just wanted to share your story with other people? Or was this something that you were encountering with encountering with your friends and your family, co workers? You know, was this like a a, a theme that you were seeing going, you know, in people's lives? Mm -hmm. Well, it started out, first let me say the Goodie Box book is fiction. However, most fiction writers tend to write from their experience. So there are things that I have experienced, whether directly or indirectly, that are included in the book. But the book is a work of fiction. They call it the black sex in the city, but it's not a lot of sex in the city. Okay, okay. It's not erotica by any stretch of the imagination. But yes, back in 2007, um, I'm, I'm going to say I was midlife-ish. We'll leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> Remember you want, but mid -life. I like that term, yeah. midlife-ish. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. mid -life -ish. Yeah, well, what, okay, wait. Area. So you were midlifeish. So give me an age range between what and what is midlifeish, because I want to be able to use that for a while. Oh, you gonna throw that boy? Well, let's say twenty to seventy. Okay. Well, see, hey, I'm midlifeish then. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So midlifeish, and I, I was married and still am married, but I was still going through this thing in my life where, for whatever reason, I was attracting all kind of men. I okay. don't know what I was doing differently. I don't know what was going on. But here I am, this married woman, and men are coming out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I had girlfriends who were single, and single, so single, that they weren't getting any hits, no cat calls, no Facebook likes, no nothing. They're okay. like, what's going on? Uh -huh. So I started doing some assessment and started doing some research and started talking to men. You know, what things is it about women, you know, the woman that you would want to marry? Mm -hmm. What things would you be looking for in the woman you want to marry? And okay. I started doing research, and I did interviews, and I did surveys and polls, and, and I took that information that men shared with me. Sometimes they knew I was listening, and sometimes they didn't. And I wrapped it up into these fictional characters to take women on the journey. Okay. So the intent is to give you real relationship advice from men, but I provide it in an entertaining way. Oh. And so... Yeah, so what has happened is these I mean, these men had, you know, there was no ulterior motive. Some of the men I talked to were family members. Some of the men I talked to were complete strangers who I would never see again. So, you know, they were they were quite honest with me because of the things that they shared. Okay. So what I did in addition to that, I created what's called Every Man's Private Marriage Checklist. And yeah. that's on the website, the yes, be because yes. you posted that and you said why, mm -hmm. and you posted it with the question, why won't he marry me? So what, were mm -hmm. the, what, what are the two or three top reasons in that checklist why a man won't marry you? Well, now I'm going to, I'm going to say the best for last because women just don't believe me when I say that. Okay. But one of the, one of the top things that men said is that they want an independent woman really yes honey they what? don't want the clingy needy woman they want the sister who has her own life but is able to incorporate him into her life okay so wait mm -hmm. okay so now because see now i hear i hear both sides of that because most people men say a lot of men say i won't say most men a lot of men say well i don't want a woman that can do everything on her own because what does she need me for but you're saying that meant that some men are saying, yeah, they do want that independent person. When I'm saying independent, now I'm not talking about the woman who says, I got it all together and I don't need a man for anything but sex. I'm okay. not talking about that kind of independence. Okay. I'm talking about the kind of independence where 
you know, she has her own job. She has her own um, ability to make money. She has her own friend. She has her own life. And she's not so consumed with him that she forgets who she is. Okay. Because, okay. you know, because, of course, all men, everybody wants to feel needed. But I'm talking about some women are so needy and dependent upon their man mm-hmm. that if he is sick, she can't function. Okay. If he has to go out of town, the bills don't get paid. Oh, you know, geez. nobody, they don't want that. They want someone whom they can trust. If I have to go out of town for a little while, my house is still going to be there. My kids are still going to be fed. Okay. So they want a woman who is independent, who is self-sufficient from the perspective of she doesn't need him to take care of her financially, mentally, emotionally, or any other needs. But she wants him in her life. Okay, I got it. Okay, okay. so what's yeah. another? What's what's number uh, two or three ish? Okay, I'm gonna tell you number two. Then number three, nobody, no women just like girl bad. Number two is men don't like the drama. Oh period. well, well you know what, and that should have been number one. Cause who well, wants it drama? Been. Right, who wants drama in their life? Because okay, really seriously, if you want drama, there's plenty of it on television. You don't have to live it. You can live vicariously mm-hmm. or through the people. I mean, come on, let's be realistic now. Every real uh, housewife of Orange County, New Jersey, Atlanta, and whomever else you want to put used to be DC <laughs> for a little while. All of them got plenty of drama for all of us. They make plenty mm-hmm. of money. They can get themselves out of that situation. So of course, I would think that that would have been the number one thing. But I think that goes for men and women. Women don't want a whole bunch right. of drama in their life either. And here's the point: because a lot of men think, "Oh, well, I don't bring drama," and they think that the drama is, you know, from be- having more than one mother of their child or you know baby mm-hmm. that's not the only drama that men can bring men can bring drama with their friends i mean you know mm-hmm. we all know the brother that would rather hang out with his boys than take his girl out for a movie and dinner so that's a little bit of drama in itself so okay mm-hmm. i think i'm prepared. But, now, but, but now let me clarify what women perceive as drama and men perceive as drama aren't always the same thing Okay. Because we are so different in how we process and communicate. Mm-hmm. So, for example, a woman who is trying to convey a message to her man, believing he doesn't understand, may repeat herself 20 times and then become a nagger. So okay. a man nagging is dramatic. That's drama. Okay. I heard you the first time. We don't have to go through this over and over and over again. Okay, so then I'm guilty. Um, so I'm just going to say that right now. Like, I, when I was married, I would say something over and over. But here's why we say it. Now, see, I'm going to make an excuse. <laughs> here's the excuse. The reason we say it over and over is because they don't respond to us. If exactly. I say something to you and I get silence, that means you didn't hear me. So that means right. I need to say it until you respond. Now, if I say it two or three times and I walk away, you still haven't responded, I'm going to come back and be even louder and say it even more harsher than the first time. So, And then it's an argument. But see, that's why we say it over and over. Right, ladies? Mm -hmm. We say Mm -hmm. it because we don't get a response. Exactly right. You know, if we got a response like, I heard you, I'm good. Right, right. But that doesn't work because... Again, men and women, we process information differently. So what needs to happen is we need to have a sit down and say, babe, you know, don't just keep saying it again. You know, actually stop and let's look at each other. Let's talk. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so you you're saying, me what I said? so instead of me, like, you know, yelling, like, I don't do that now. Okay. I might do it with right, my right. kids, but, um, I, and I might do it with my grandbabies, but so you're saying that instead of saying like, did, you know, Hey, I asked you to take the out the trash. Instead of saying that, I, I'm supposed to stand in front of the television and say, did you hear what I said? Uh, that's yeah. why I'm <laughs> No, that's not what Shit. I'm saying. No, 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 no. Okay. No. But see, here's another difference. When women say something or ask for something, we want it to be done immediately. Yes, we when do. A man says, right. When a man says, I'll get to it, in his mindset, I'll get to it maybe a few hours from now, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> oh, so my God. It, it, I had matter- this. Oh my God, you're so right. You you are so right. I had this conversation with someone because I said, this is what I actually said. I, they, he said to me, well, you told me once, why are you telling me again? I said, well, because you haven't done it. He was like, well, I said I was going to get to it. I'm like, but when is your get to it? He was like, as long as it's done by the end of the day, it's done. And I'm like, but I want it done now. He was like, but you didn't say that. Right. So See, it's communication. Uh, we have to, and that's, we want to blame the men on not doing certain things, but we have to be more effective at communicating. If your thing is vague, 
can you take the trash out right now? It really smells bad, and mm-hmm. I need to do trash bag in here. That he may be more apt to do it now than opposed to can you take the trash out. But see, but isn't it implied? It's implied that you want to do it right but, now. But right, but impl- implication means I'm expecting him to read between the lines and read my mind, <laughs> oh, and that's where we have a shortfall in communication. Oh, okay. So if you are looking at your computer right now, this <laughs> is the face that I make when I say, "Can you do something right now?" Okay, that's the face that I give him. So, see, I'm thinking that by the facial expression, he should know, I want it done right now. Like, can you do that no. right now? Like, so so I no. need to say, I need. can you do X, Y, and Z right now? And if he says, I'll right. get to it, I need to accept. I need to accept. Ladies, we need to accept when they say they'll get to it, that it will get done. It might not get done when we want it to, but yeah. it will. Okay, so that's a you, hard either lesson. Either you say, can you do it right now, or can you say, babe, when when can I expect the trash to be empty? So then okay. you put it on him. Okay. So he can either say, well, I'll get to it now, or I'll get to it by this evening. That okay. way, in your mind, you're like, okay, I'll give him to this evening to get it before mm-hmm. you come back with them, you know, before you come back with it again. But I could come back with it again if he said, I'm going to get to it this evening, and it's like 9 o'clock. I could come back to it. Yeah, but you know, and also uh, see, and that's it, it depends on what how you deliver the message. Okay, you know, I, I do communication. I do nonverbal communication. Oftentimes, when we as women, because we are emotional creatures, mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. That's how God designed us. But we reflect our emotion in our tone, in our body language, in our stance, in our posturing, and how we breathe and how we move. Mm-hmm. And so. We may just, the words may be making you take out the trash, but all the attitude with the stuff in the teeth and the hands on the hips and the smack in the lips and, can you please take out the trash? You're like, wait a minute. Okay. (laughs) Okay, so standing there with my arms folded, with my eyes rolling and saying, can you take out the trash now? That, that's saying that, okay. (laughs) And it's smacking your lips. See, all all that's drama to a man. All that's, what is all that unnecessary stuff? Okay. So we... We have to learn how to communicate more effectively with each other. I'm not putting all the onus on women. Okay. We have to learn how to you know, effectively communicate with each other. All right. Now, the last thing. The, the oh, this thing, should be good. Honey, when I tell you, when they told me this, I was like, y'all lying, y'all lying. <laughs> you know, because now the list probably has 20 different things. So okay. For every man, some things are different. Okay. But there were, there were some uh, repeat type of issues that they kept reinforcing. Okay. You no know, drama was reinforced several times. Mm-hmm. Independent was several times. And this one, which is what threw me, is they wanted a woman who did not quickly give up the goodies. What? That's what they said. Okay. Now, of course, of course, you know, you know the men want the goodie box. They want the goodie box. Yeah. If you don't give it to them, they're going to take it. The man who is looking for the woman who he wants to marry, mm-hmm. the man he wants to be the mother of his children, mm-hmm. the man who wants to meet the woman he wants to introduce to his family and his friends. Uh-huh. He doesn't want the woman who was an easy catch because one, it means if I got it this easy, who else done got it this easy? Ooh. Or if I got it this easy, how can I guarantee that the next joker ain't gonna come in after me and get it this easily? I don't he don't wanna walk into a room and twenty people in there and ten of them done had her. You know, men they don't want that. Okay. So he doesn't he wants to, to pursue and chase. But what we as women often do is think that okay, I'm good and I can do somersaults and cartwheels and I can do this and mm-hmm. I can do that and I'm gonna I'm back it up and I'm gonna smack it and I'm gonna clap it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's not what draws a man in. It may draw a certain type of man in, okay. but a man who's looking for a wife, mm-hmm. a man who's looking for a committed monogamous relationship, mm-hmm. that's not what he's looking for in his companion. Okay. Sex is important, don't get me wrong. Right. But it should not be his priority and definitely should not be hers. Okay. What we 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 don't let the men chase us. We give up the goodie and then we wonder why he ain't calling. Right. Exactly. Oh, mm, ding. Let me mm, ding ding on that one <laughs> because and you know what? It's so fun because we as women, a lot of women will go out with a guy one or two days and then and then all of a sudden and the show the I N P Y S H show last week. 
talked about this, that as soon as we see a man, we see good hair, cute babies. He going to look, <laughs> my friend's going to be so impressed. I'm going to go sleep with him. And then you sleep with him on the first, second, or third date. And then you wonder, well, why are he not calling me? Now you're getting mm-hmm. little stalkish tendencies because now you're thinking, Drama. well, wait a minute. He, you know, he was here for the weekend now. Okay, look at here, ladies. If he was there on Friday and Saturday but did not wake up and go to church with you on Sunday and not there to take you to work on Monday, that was just your weekend piece. Get that straight mm-hmm. right now in your mind because, see, a man will stay with you as long as you're giving him a good, comfortable bed to sleep in. That's right. I, I'm just saying, okay, I think I had to ding that on myself because, I mean, I, I'm just saying because a lot of women don't understand. They're saying, oh, I don't understand. What, you know, he said that he was this, that, and the other, and he was so nice and this, that. And then you sleep with him, he gone, he done moved on to the next one, and now, you mm-hmm. you know, you, you're calling his phone, you're texting him why you ain't calling me, then you want to drop by. Don't do the drop by, ladies. Drive-bys, virtual drop by. <laughs> You're stalking his Everybody Facebook and his Twitter and his Instagram, seeing who right. liking his pictures and drama. oh god, yeah. So that's I'm number. That what was that number two? Yeah, that's exactly. So, so now, so in your in the fictional novel in the for, the forbidden secrets of the goodie box. So. And you took every, you know, real life experience, you put it in the fiction, and so then we, you take us through the the relationship um, with uh, Deborah Hampton. So mm-hmm. in in this novel, are people? What was the purpose of writing this novel? Was it for entertainment only, but or was it for entertainment and to help women see themselves as maybe some of the women in the book or some of the guys in the book, and to help them along in their relationships? My reason for writing the Betty Box book was not to be entertaining. That's just my that's my personality. So that came out in the book. Mm-hmm. My reason for writing the book was to help women make better choices when it came to men. I run into so many women clients who say, All men are dogs, you know, I'm tired of men doing this to me, I'm tired of men doing that to me, or men will come up and say, Women only want me for my money, this or that and like I would tell the women, You can't get mad about the fleas. You keep shopping at the dog pound. Oh! <laughs> oh, ding, ding. wow. Ding, ding. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So like I tell the you know, you're complaining about all the women who you've dated, and they're taking this, and they only want you for that, and they only want the money for this. I said, but you have to stop and say, what's the common factor in all of these women? Exactly. Well, they're all greedy, and they all want this. I said, no, the common factor is you. Right. You have to sit down and say, what is it about me that keeps attracting this type of woman? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if you're bragging about your money all your time, or if every time you go out somewhere with a woman, you kind of wine and dine her and show her the best that you have and pick her up in your Mercedes and then take her to your, you know, if everything you talk about is money-based and what you have and what you've acquired, mm-hmm. you're attracting the type of women who are impressed by that. Right. Ooh. That's mm. Okay. So. so I tell all the time, you're getting mad. Um, you know, or is it really that all men are dogs or are you walking around with a on space around your head? Oh, whoop. Okay. <laughs> okay. See, oh, I see. Now I'm sorry we don't have a whole hour, but I'm gonna have to have you back because we got to get all deep into this. Um, yeah, so ma'am. because we, you know, our time is a good god, a 25 minutes and went by already. But tell tell my viewers and my listeners because some people are are listening where they can find you online. Okay. So the website for the book, where they can reach out to me, is thegoodyboxbook.com. And goody is spelled G-O-O-D-Y, thegoodyboxbook.com. The book is also available on Amazon. I have an audio book coming out. Okay. My Facebook page is Valerie J. L. Coleman. Mm-hmm. So Facebook dot Valerie J. Facebook.com slash Valerie J. L. Coleman. They can reach out to me on Facebook. Then I'm also on LinkedIn, YouTube, um, and those pages. They can they can gain access to those from the GoodieBoxBook.com website. Okay, so uh, is, is what I know you mentioned that there is a possibility that one of the viewers today could win a copy of this novel. Tell them what they need to do. Well, what they need to do is go to my um, the GoodieBoxBook.com page and contact me so send me an email through the website the contact us page on the website and tell me that they heard 
be on your show. Yes, and you know what? To make it even more truthful, because you know they can tell us what the number one uh, rule, the number one thing that the men don't, you know, why do he won't marry him? So tell her that when you contact yeah. her. One of one of three. Yeah, one of three. One or I one, two, or three. three. Exactly. So we, I thank you for joining me today. I'm definitely gonna have you back because we need to get way down deep into this book. Because I, ooh, I, as soon as I finish reading this book, I just know I'm gonna have more questions. So, uh huh. So my intern is gonna be contacting you very soon to get you back on this show. So I thank you for joining us, and I hope you have. That, well, let me ask you, where are you located at? based out of Dayton, Ohio. They, okay, so the the it's kind of cold out there now too, huh? Lord, yes. Yes, yeah. So, yeah, so I I know that the weather that you have in Ohio kind of sort of comes east. So, yeah. yeah. I, I I'm cold too. That's why I got the boots with the fur today. So, uh stay warm and stay with us because I'm going to have Michelle Casino on in a couple of minutes and and I get, I definitely will be contacting you again so we can get back into this the forbidden secrets of the goodie box. So, thank you well, for joining well, me thank today. You. So, thank you for having me. Thank you. So, I will talk to you right after my show. Okay. Okay. So that, okay, okay, if y'all want a copy of that book, if you're not one of the lucky people that wins the copy of the book, you need to go into uh, Amazon.com, type in the Forbidden Secrets of the Goodie Box and order it. But if you want a chance to win it, you need to go to uh, her website, thegoodieboxbook.com. Go to the Contact Us page, and you're going to put in either one, two, or three, one of those things uh, saying where, you know, what men do not like, and you might uh, win a copy of that book. And if you win a copy of the book, you need to post a picture online with you with the book and say that you won the book from the We Be Swinging show. So right Right now on the line, I have Michelle Catino, and, and I'm not even quite sure if I'm saying your last name correctly. Am I saying it correctly, Michelle? Yes, you are. Oh. You are. Okay, because <laughs> I wasn't sure. I was like, oh, I, I'm saying the name, putting the video all out on Facebook, and don't even know if I'm saying her name right. <laughs> this is Michelle. <laughs> this is Michelle Catino, and she is the queen not princess she is the queen of plus size fiction now let me ask you what made you want to write stories that included plus size protagonists hmm. well honestly i was um brought up to you know my my, my parents always told me to do what i love mm -hmm. so i love writing and then with writing, I was always told to write what I know. Mm -hmm. So when it came to writing about plus size characters, that's something I knew. So that's what I decided to do. I needed to keep it, you know, authentic. And so uh, that was authentic to me. I don't know a plus, you know, a skinny woman's lifestyle. I don't know what she does. I don't know her hair. I don't know, you know, okay. how, she, <laughs> how she goes shopping. I know nothing about that. I'm okay. a plus size woman. So I know what I go through. Mm -hmm. I know, you know those little uh, quirks that we have. I know how it is to get dressed. I know how it is to go shopping. I know how it is to eat, you know, and everybody thinks that you're overeating and you're not, you know, this is just regular. Some people are just big bones. So right. I, I wrote the story that I could tell authentically. So okay. that's what made me go into the plus size business. So right. you you have um, Love and Happiness. It Was, that's, mm -hmm. was that the first book? Yes, that is. Okay, so. Oh, that's the uh, full length book. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you have, um, uh, okay, so tell me a little bit about love and happiness. And and let me just say, whoever's doing your cover art, beautiful work. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks. Um, love and Happiness is about Roxanne Lindzen, and Roxanne is like my alter ego. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> She's okay. She's sassy with a hint of tramp. And okay. Honestly, <laughs> a hint of tramp. Okay, that's a new one. Yeah, just a hint, just a hint, you know. So, the book is basically about Roxanne on a search for love and happiness. And so it's she's caught in like a love rectangle with her fiance, her ex ex lover who used to who's also her half sister, and a person who's from her 
fiance's past is now her new boo. Okay. So, you know, on this on this journey to love and happiness, she has to figure out, you know, some things about herself, some things about others. And she enlists help the help of her sister to find out, you know, about the path that her fiance and her uh, new obsession, you know, mm-hmm. share. And so it's like a, just a whirlwind affair of things that happen on her search for herself and for true love and happiness. And, you know, if she's not careful or one of her lovers not careful, you know, they may lose everything, including their life. Oh, so wow. It's like, yeah, okay. a lot of, a lot of, uh, so would you call this a romantic suspense novel? Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. So then you came out with me and Mrs. Me and Mrs. Jones. So are th- are your books a series, or or do they follow just one main character, but it's not really a series, it's just the same main character? Okay, Love and Happiness is a standalone title with its own characters. Okay. Um, me and Mrs. Jones is actually a series, so it's a three-part series. Part one is out now. Part two will be out on Valentine's Day, so make sure you get a copy. Okay, okay. So what's the name of that <laughs> one? That was just me and Mrs. Jones Part 2. Okay. And then uh, me and Mrs. Jones Part 3 will be out, you know, most likely in March or April. Okay. Depending upon um, what, you know, what my release schedule looks like with my publisher and my editing and everything like that. Okay. So part 2, again, will be out on uh, Valentine's Day. Okay. So now when you wrote this story and you said you write what you know, did you find, and, and I'm not sure because I, I don't, I mean, I, I do have one plus size girl in my book, but she's not like the, she's mm-hmm. the best friend of my character. But did you, did you get a lot of negative feedback from plus size women about your character because they felt maybe you shouldn't, you know, portray them as a little trampish, you know, cause Mm-hmm. Even, you know, when you say a little trampish and you're writing novels, people take that like, oh, my gosh, she's writing erotica. You know, so it's like yeah. it, 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 it is our little bit is everyone else's a lot. So did you get any you negative know, feedback? I, I got actually positive feedback because when I say a little trampish, I just mean like that's just everybody, you know. Right. There's not such a thing as like bad people. There's bad people, who, there's good people who make bad decisions. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> Roxanne's one of those, she's the type of person who she's just making a bad decision, but she's actually a really good person. Okay. You know? So that can happen in anyone's life. You know, you, you may be feeling like unloved or, you know, mistreated or misused and someone comes along and they see an opportunity and they pounce, you know, right? they're like a predator on, on whatever you're going through in your life or somebody who may have wanted you for a long time mm-hmm. and they see that you're down and this is their time, you know, this is their chance to get what they always wanted. So, you know, in, in certain situations, you're vulnerable, your judgment is impaired and things happen. Mm-hmm. And that's basically what happens in love and happiness. So the way it's told, it's, it's just told of, in a very realistic way. Okay. So it's not that she's a tramp or it's not that she's, you know, lose or anything like that it's just that in certain situations things can happen and so i actually got positive feedback because it's like a really a, a true story you know it's like a, a right. real story it's realistic and it's not anything that's making her seem like two way over to the left or two way over mm-hmm. to the right she's just a normal plus size african-american professional woman mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> actually made a bad decision that's right it. exactly which we all do so i know that you also do a radio show um, yeah. and, and now do, is that a weekly show or a monthly show? I actually have two shows. Uh, one is the Q spot with big body and okay. that one is bi-monthly. So that, uh, airs every first and third Friday on blog talk radio. Mm-hmm. And I also have the my big girl panty show and the my big girl panty show is a show that, you know, celebrates and empowers plus size women. And that one is on the second Sunday of each month. And that one is at two o'clock PM Eastern standard time. And the big, the uh the big body is first and third parties again at nine o'clock p.m eastern standard time so let me ask you because the name is just too i i got to because big girl panties <laughs> um the big girl panty show now how did mm-hmm. that name come to be because whenever you think about things that you need to do or mm-hmm. you know it's like i'm always i'm gonna go put my big girl panties uh, yeah. this, you know, so yeah yeah it just it just resonated with me i was like you know what it's true <laughs> whenever that, you have to do yeah that's true that is and, true you know empowering or mm-hmm. anything that you have to just get up and just make it happen is that you have to put your big girl panties on that's true so i figured you know, why not just make, make the name of the show? Mm-hmm. So what are some of the topics that you cover on now? 
the top, well, let's talk about both shows. So on the Big Girl Panty Show, what are some of the topics that you discuss on that show? We discuss everything. We discuss everything from relationships to domestic violence. Um, the show just started, as a matter of fact, this year, uh, uh, last year in October, I think was our first broadcast. So this is like our fourth show now. But so far, we've discussed domestic violence. We've discussed self-worth. We've actually had a male author on who writes plus size characters into his book so you know his version of uh steam you know building for plus size women and how they should feel you know to average men okay and um just a lot of things like that just like well, motivation and inspiration so a lot of it is self-worth a lot of it is career choices a mm -hmm. lot of it is relationship advice you know parenting everything like that. Okay. And so, so on support. your other show, the show that you do every other mm -hmm. Friday, what is that show mainly focused on? Uh, the Two Talk Big Body is for new authors and for entrepreneurs who are looking to promote their products and or services or new releases. So mm -hmm. we try to just give an outlet to people who don't have, you know, that outlet from mainstream media. Okay. Okay. That's a wow. That's great. Um, so mm -hmm. I know that you are working or you will have a, a work in an erotic anthology, uh, under Zane Straper imprint. So tell us how that came to be about. Well, that just came out of nowhere. What <laughs> had happened is, um, originally entice who's also a best selling author. Yes. She was going to, um, publish a an anthology under her imprint a million thoughts publishing mm -hmm. and so she sent out a you know sent out a query for writers who were interested and we were all to send in our you know our, our submissions i sent the submission and mine was chosen along with a few others mm -hmm. and so you know a couple of months later she came back to us and told us that instead of her releasing it she actually sent it into zane and zane loved it and picked it up so you know, God is good. Yeah, wow. <laughs> out. And so that's going uh, to be released oh, this this year as well? Yeah, it should definitely be. It should be out late 2015, if not early 2016, but they are pushing to have it out by the end of this year. So do you? is that going to be a print book or is that just going to be e-book? Um, with Zane, I'm quite sure it'll be both. Okay. So let me ask you with your, with your, um, your full, the, the, the plus size fiction that you do, do you find it mm -hmm. hard to market? Because it, it, you know, plus size fiction seems like it might only, even though everyone reads everything, but are you specifically, mm -hmm. uh, marketing toward the plus size community or are you just, you know, a broad range of marketing efforts? We are geared towards the plus size community, but you know, it's for everyone. It's mm -hmm. not just for plus size women because just like how a plus size woman would would read books with smaller characters, you know, it's the same thing that I'm doing. You're mm -hmm. just a small person reading a book with a plus size character. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 for everyone. It's not, you know, just for a plus size person because, you know, it's not like if only big people go to McDonald's, you know. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not like only alcoholics go to the liquor store. Right, you know? so right. It, that's it, true. It's not, it's not that I just market, you know, to a certain type of audience. Mm -hmm. I'm geared towards a certain type of audience. That is my, my target audience. However, you know, it's for everyone. Now, as the president of Big Body Publishing, what is the number one thing or number one complaint that you have when people submit to you? Well, actually, we don't take submissions at this time. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, but when we do, <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I think that because I've actually been writing for, for a while and I've spoken to other publishing companies that do take submissions, and I know that their biggest pet peeve has been that people will send in things that are not in genres that they represent. Mm-hmm. So, now, you know, it's like a urban fiction genre and they're sending in romance novels or thriller novels or psycholo psychological thrillers and mm -hmm. it's not what they represent. So I think that was basically their big pet peeve for me and myself. We're not taking submissions as yet, so I couldn't really, you know, answer that question from, from my point of view. Okay. And so do you think that all of your characters are always going to be plus size? All of my characters are plus size. My my main characters will be will always be plus size. Mm -hmm. Yes, but not every single character in a book is plus size because not every single character in the world is plus size. 
Okay. Like I said, my my yeah, my books take on a very realistic tone. You mm-hmm. know, it's it's not even so much that they're obese or overly overweight or anything like that. It's just mm-hmm. that many people in this world are a size twelve and up, as mm-hmm. opposed to a size ten and down. You know, so it's just a more realistic view of what the population looks like. Well, Mine just happens to you know, have an influx of the full majority of the people and not just a certain, you know, a certain part of it. So, Art, right, wait a minute. Did I just hear you that that plus size is considered size 12? Some people do consider it from 12 and up. You know, most really? people say 14 and up. But I know that especially in the modeling with mm-hmm. sizes, they actually say sometimes that a, 12, a size 12 is plus size. Wow. Because I always yeah. thought plus size was size 16 and up. Like, like I, maybe yeah. I'm telling my age, but when I was growing up, mm-hmm. size 16 yeah. was like plus size. That's where you went and had to pay the extra $2 to get, you know, the same <laughs> shirt that was over there in a size 8, but you had to go down and one owl over and pay an extra $2, right. which I don't understand why it, it changed, it's the same it shirt, so just much. a little Thank bit you. more material. And that, Mm-hmm. And that's why I said, like, when I say I'm writing for a plus size, it's, it's mm-hmm. anything that, that people consider plus size. When when I tell you that a size 12 in the modeling agency, you know, in modeling agencies, they feel like that's big, like she's a plus size model. You know, and a size 12 in everyday life, that's mm-hmm. a good, you know, that's a good size person that's it's, regular, it, you know. I know, I was going to say because. On, yeah, even if you go into the big stores, you know, like Ashley Stewart, et cetera, et cetera, mm-hmm. they all started a size 14 as their, their, their base Size. Well, so well, now it's funny. It it's funny that you mentioned Ashley Stewart because I was shopping in Ashley Stewart. Okay, yes, I go shopping mm-hmm. in Ashley Stewart because I do have some plus size friends, so I go in there mm-hmm. to shop. And so I went into Ashley Stewart over Christmas, right? I went into Ashley Stewart yeah. and I was looking for this cute little dress. I had seen it online. I was going in the store. Do you know I got stank attitude? Like I got stank attitude. I walked in. I was Why? walking around because the woman actually said this store is not for you, and I'm like how do you know? And she was like, because you're not a size 12. And I'm like, what? Are you serious? I got to be a size 12 to even walk in the store? So then another lady came over and she was like, oh, I remember you. You brought your friend in here last summer because I, you know, take my friends in there all the time when I'm looking for something. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, are you buying something for her? And I was like, yeah, I want to find something for her for Christmas. And I asked her, I said, well, what was her problem? And she said, well, you know, she's a little sensitive. And I'm like, but why mm. is it that if you look at me being a certain size, you discriminate? Because to me, it felt like discrimination. I don't know. But here's the thing. Didn't have that. I wore a size 12 probably about a year ago. So if I would have went in there and shopped, she probably would have been happy that I was shopping for myself. Now, granted, I, you know, most women don't tell what size they wear, but I don't really care. I wear, I'm a size 10. I wear a size 10. Mm-hmm. But, you know, sometimes I buy a size 12 just because it's comfortable. Not because I want to, you know feel some kind of way or just well, okay sometimes I just want to shop in Ashley Stewart for me because they have some <laughs> cute little clothes um and uh-huh. tour it but now have you found that a lot of stores are now gearing themselves toward like tour it Ashley Stewart Lane Bryan has always I think been for plus size people but now it's like when you walk in stores like that they don't want the, the quote-unquote skinny girl to be walking in there that you know i never i'm on the other realm of it too so you know i'm walking in as a big girl so they're happy to see me yeah. <laughs> so, oh. you're probably you're probably the first story that i heard of like reverse discrimination i know and crazy. i felt you know, really so, bad well, so what you know a sale is a sale there's still somebody coming into shopping your store who exactly purchase something you know so you never turn away you know a customer regardless to what size or right. race or religion etc you know so that's a little crazy but no I've never actually experienced it because like I said you know maybe sometimes when I do walk into smaller stores who don't who don't have their mm-hmm. plus size section you know quote unquote plus size section <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I usually get the same face too like what are you doing in here nothing here can fit you you know but maybe I'm not shopping for myself but again you know? even if you're not so, even if you go in a store like that and you're not sh- e- e- okay if anybody goes into any store 
store. They should be allowed to shop. Now, like I said, I have not been back to that Ashley store per se because I was like, I don't want to run into a little stank face because I felt mm-hmm. this is how bad I felt. When I walked out of there, I was like, well, maybe I should go to McDonald's and eat something because I felt so bad. Wow. Like she made me feel really bad because she followed me around like I was about to steal something. That was the first thing. Then I thought, okay, well, maybe she's security and she's just in plain clothes or something like that. It is the holidays. You never know. So, but then when she said, you know, uh, can I help you? And I'm like, oh, I'm looking for something. Oh, well, nothing in here can fit you. And I'm like, oh, oh, I mean, like, I was just like, what? Uh, What is happening? And then I thought, maybe I'm being punked. Maybe there's a video camera. Maybe they, you know, so I'm looking all around in the ceiling. And I'm like, well, I'm looking, well, you know, what size do you wear? And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not quite sure. Well, I I can't help you. And I'm like, wow. And then, okay, and I know I shouldn't have had this thought. Then I thought, well, maybe she's just hungry. That's That was my mm-hmm. thought. I was like, maybe her blood sugar is low, and maybe she just needs something to eat. And I was getting ready to go in my purse and get a piece of candy because I had some, like, you know, I keep <laughs> hard candy in my purse, like, if you start coughing. And then I was like, okay, then she'd probably want to fight me because she think, what, you think because I'm a big girl I'm hungry now? Well, that was the thought that crossed my mind. But, yeah. I, you know, the whole, like, it just threw me off. I couldn't even enjoy my shopping experience at that point. Mm-hmm. So it was like... Any amount of, like, racism or discrimination, you know, they're always going to make you feel off because yeah. of, you know, yeah. your ignorance. But you can't let that change you. You can't let that define you. You can't let that, you know, deter whatever you were set out to do. You know, if you went in there to shop for your friend, then you should have went in there and tended shopping for your friend. You know, let her stay ignorant on the side while you do what you have to do. All right. You know, so I, I you, wanted to you ask you. Off everybody's thing. All right. So I wanted to ask you about. I saw that you once optioned a screenplay with Queen Latifah's Flavor Unit Films. Which, which, um, mm-hmm. what uh, ebook did you adapt for screenplay? Well, actually, me and Mrs. Jones was the screenplay that was optioned with uh, Queen Latifah's Flavor Unit Films, and I actually started out as a screenwriter. I oh. didn't start out writing novels. Okay, I started out writing screenplays, and so um, at that time, you know, she had just started Flavor Unit, and she mm-hmm. was looking for scripts and so I sent it in you know I took the query the submission etc cetera, etc cetera, and she came back and was like we're really interested in it and so um they optioned it on two different occasions mm-hmm. but you know things fell through and it never came into fruition but I felt so strongly about the story and the storyline mm-hmm. you know that I just decided to make it an ebook series so now did if okay and for the character would it would you could you see Queen Latifah playing your character yeah. So, okay, Definitely. for me and Mrs. Jones or for Love and Happiness? From both, honestly. You know, she both both books have very strong uh, plus-size protagonists, mm-hmm. you know, and so I would see her as any one of the female characters in those books because, you know, she is business-minded, she is intelligent, she is knowledgeable, she's beautiful, she's curvy, you know, she's everything that these characters are, so she would actually portray exactly what, you know, they are you know, in the books. Okay. On film. All right. So tell everyone. Okay. So me and Mrs. Jones part two drops on mm-hmm. Valentine's day. Correct. Yes. It okay. Does. So we want yeah. everybody to go out and get me and Mrs. Jones part two, uh, get that on, uh, Valentine's day. Can they pre-order the book? Uh, the book will be ready for pre-order in about a week. Okay, so in a week, people, go out and support and pre-order Me and Mrs. Jones Part 2. And while you're waiting for that book, you know, for that book to arrive, go ahead and download Me and Mrs. Jones, the original, the first one. Um, yes. And you need to look up Michelle. Where can they find you online? Well, online, um, Facebook would be the first because I'm always on Facebook. So it would just be www.facebook.com backslash Michelle Catino and Michelle with two L's Catino is spelled C-U-T-T-I-N-O and again it's Michelle Catino um my handle on there is Michelle Big Body Catino on Twitter it's just at Michelle Catino and also my website is www.michellecatino.com and if you go to the website it has everything the good reads the blog talk radio shows you know the Twitter the Pinterest right. The Instagram, everything else. So, so make sure, okay, my listeners and viewers, I want you to go out. I want you to support uh, 
Michelle Catino, the the queen, the queen herself of plus plus size fiction and get love and happiness make sure you get me and mrs jones part one which is out now me and mrs jones part two comes out on valentine's day and me and mrs jones part three will be out sometime in 2015 and make sure you look for the erotic uh story under zane straber imprint releasing later this year or the beginning of 2016 and i want to thank you Michelle for joining me today thank you so much for having me I appreciate it I I, I look forward to to, to downloading uh, uh, me and mrs. Jones on uh, on February 14th and and because I won't be in the country I'll download it while mm -hmm. I'm over in the island so I'll be we reading oh, something while you. I'm on in the beat on the beach so thank you for It'll joining me some great reading for you on the beach I know right <laughs> I, I might you that. I, I, you know, I, when I read books, I get very animated. So I, I, I'm sure mm -hmm. someone's going to be taking some video while I'm out on the islands reading your book. <laughs> I'm quite sure of that. <laughs> so thank you for joining me today. You're welcome. And have safe travels. You, Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, so that was Miss Michelle Catino, the the queen of plus size fiction and the hour is flying by it's 4 51 and i only got a couple minutes to do my soapbox moment but i have to do this soapbox moment i know i did one early about chris brown and all that foolishness about him not doing his hundred hours of community service um but this one is right here in dc it's in the silver spring area and i don't know if all of you have been following the story of the parents who the neighbor called um child protect protective services on these parents because their 10 and 6 year old were walking home from the park or walking home from school or so, I don't know what they were doing they were walking home by themselves let me tell you something can you mind your business people mind your business because I have walked when when we were all younger we were walking home from school because right now kids do walk to and from school and not everyone has a parent walking with them people if you live within I think a half a mile of a school you have to walk and most parents have a job that they are going to now it's not like these kids are walking four blocks down to the liquor store and picking up a pint and taking it back home to their parents they were at the park they go to the park the same way and the same way home whenever they were allowed to go um my girlfriend Frances Frost hey Frances she wrote about this on her blog and she had a quick I mean she she made great points she says we're talking about two elementary age kids walking a path according to their parents that they have traveled before and up until the nosy neighbor called the police they were doing just fine now these parents could lose their children because they allowed them to walk home from the park. Now, I have played, I have. I had five children. Oh, I still had five children. I ain't lose none of them. I had five children. And I used to take them to the park, as Frances does with hers. And what do we all do when we take our kids to the park? We go to the park. We say, okay, y'all out here for a couple of hours, go play. And what do we do? We sit back, we cross our arms, we either playing Candy Crush, we reading a book, you know, either reading Life in Space by Frances Frost or reading my book. We, we're we doing something. We're talking to our girlfriends. We're on the phone. We're doing anything. Every now and again, we'll look up. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Boom, got all five kids. Now, what am I doing? I'm going back to doing what I was doing. And if I get hot, bothered, and tired, I'll say to my kids, okay, y'all got another hour to be out here. Come on home when you get done. I get their attention. They come to me. They tell I tell them come home in an hour. They walk home. What was the rule when we were small? Be on the porch before the street lights come on. Now we all know that rule, people. Now why these little nosy neighbors up in Silver Spring ain't got nothing to do with their time but to call CPS on these parents? Don't you have some other issues that you need to be investigating whether than these two little children walking home on that by themselves? These kids are well versed, well traveled. Now let me tell you something. If I had walked home a little bit more when I was little, I wouldn't be so directionally challenged now. I can't find my way if the GPS ain't screaming at me and redirecting me. So I 
I applaud them for allowing their children to not be afraid of the world. We are raising a bunch of kids that are scared of their own shadows. We're not saying to go out there and just throw them out to the wolves at night. This is during the middle of the day. And these parents know where their kids are and they have done it before. People let me tell you something. Mind your business. If you're going to call CPS on somebody, how about you call them on the children that's running around down the street and ain't got no clothes on or their parents ain't never home when they get there? How about you call the police on that? How about you call Child Protective Services on the people that ain't sending their kids to school every day? Case in point, I got a child that ain't been in school for a whole year, but ain't nobody report that child running around the neighborhood all day, but they're going to report these parents for having their kids walk home from the from the park. So I am with Frances Frost, and if you want to see what her, the rest of that blog says, it is just pitlin.com, or just look up Frances Frost, and she, you can see what her blog is. But the whole thing is, when you are hurting, when you're hurting another parent's way that they're raising their children, if you don't like it, then you go and adopt them. That's called adoption or foster parents. If you don't like the way that parents are being are teaching their kids to come up in the world, go get your own or have your own. But mind your business because, see, last point, that could not have been me. Because if it was me, I was going to go knock on everybody's door and tell them to mind their business, and my children would have kept on walking, okay? So, until next week, people. Next week will be February. The new year is flying by already. So, I hope y'all got y'all Valentine's Day preparations already done. Don't go out here on February 13th trying to make some plans. Until next week, I will see you back here. Why? Because I'm living a beautiful life. I know you are, too. Bye-bye. All that I've got is all that I need. I got you, baby, you got me. What more could I ask for? Beautiful life.